Welcome back to my channel for another short Leica episode. And this video is about the Aposumicron SL 75mm widest open is an aperture of f2.0. And I've shot this lens on my new Leica SL2S reporter style, which I just unboxed live on my channel. And at the very end of this video, I said that I'm going to shoot this lens now on the reporter SL2S on a Christmas market in Zurich. And in this video, I will share my shooting experience and of course also sample images. Let's kick off the video. In recent years, I reviewed almost every Leica SL lens you can get and also a couple of Sigma lenses, which of course also have L-mount and a couple of Panasonic lenses again with the L-mount, because that's the L-mount alliance between Sigma, Panasonic and Leica, of course. I never reviewed the Aposumicron SL75, and that's actually a big mistake, because this might be one of the very best lenses you can get in the Leica SL lens lineup. A focal length of 75 mm, of course, is ideal for portraits, but I use this lens on that Christmas market also for close-up shots and uh, for, let's say, cityscapes, or you could call it landscape, and it works in terrific ways. And in particular, in combination with the multi-shot mode on the Leica SL2S, where, by the way, the high-resolution image with 96 megapixel is composed in the camera body. You don't need external software to do this on your computer you get fantastic results. And uh, I think also what fascinated me about that lens is autofocus. Autofocus is super snappy. Let's just have a look here. It's very quick. And uh, like I says on the description of the Aposumicron SL75, that this is an autofocus system with dual synchro drive. So it's very precise. It's very fast. It works very well. And I said in my video about the Leica SL2S that this is the best sports and action camera, but also a reportage camera in the Leica camera lineup, period. It's also a very robust camera, but that applies to all of the Leica SL cameras. So to the SL, the SL2, the SL2S, and what have you. And you can shoot with these camera lens combinations under all weather conditions. And in the same way as all the other SL lenses, also the 75 millimeter is fully weather sealed and will not let you down no matter what happens. So this is a really good combination for street action, sports, but as I said, also landscape. And uh, whatever you do, it's very well collaborating with that camera here. Let's go to the background focus. Let's go back to the model here. You see, this is very snappy, very much spot on and autofocus is highly reliable. The lens is one of the heavier lenses in the Leica SL portfolio and it brings a weight of 720 gram in addition to the weight of the camera body. The filter thread is an E67 and if you look inside, it's not the largest diameter you can have on a lens. The widest open aperture is an f2.0, as I said, and you steer this in the camera body. Let's quickly go down here so you see this. Now we are at f2.0, then we can stop down all the way to, let's see where this ends, f22. Yes, but this lens is made to be shot widest open or at least wide open, and that's what you also will see in my sample images. The minimum focusing distance is 0.5 meter, and you see here I have just enough distance to my The Witcher model here to focus appropriately, and the largest reproduction ratio is 1 divided by 5, so 20%. So this lens, and again, you will see this in the sample images, is also good for close-up shots, and based on the telefocal length, 75 millimeter and widest open f2.0, it also provides a very shallow depth of field if you open the aperture wide. The angle of view is quite narrow because 75 millimeter clearly is in the tele area. So you have diagonal 31.8 degrees, horizontal 26.7 degrees and vertical 18 degrees. And that is typical for a 75 millimeter lens shot on a full frame sensor, like we have it here in the Leica SL2S. What I also realized on the SL2S when I shot this lens, that in-body image stabilization, which is technically specified for 5.5 gains on the SL2 and the SL2S works absolutely fantastic. And I could shoot comparably long exposures handhold without any difficulties, despite the fact that we talk about a tele lens here and not about a wide angle lens. If I remember correctly, and we'll look this up in the sample images, I did one exposure handhold going beyond one second. And I don't think that will work in the same way on the Leica SL2, because one of the big advantages of the SL2S, and yes, you hear me saying advantages, is that here the sensor resolution is only 24 megapixel and not 47 megapixel. 
like you have it on the SL2. And that is an advantage if you shoot the lens handhold on the camera body because a lower resolution means you do not need to be as precise as you would need to be on a much higher resolution sensor. And that is of course an advantage in low light and again qualifies this new reporter style SL2S to be a true reportage camera for street and for situations where you don't have time or you don't have the environment to assemble a tripod and then shoot not handhold but having the camera body on a tripod. The optical construction of the lens is quite complex so we talk here about 11 lenses in nine groups. And uh, we know all that in the Leica universe, an aposomicron lens has a reputation of being, must be absolutely brilliant and sharp. And that's exactly what I found when I shut this lens on the Leica SL2S. I'm super happy with the results. Clearly I will also shoot this lens on the Leica SL2, but I'm sure it will perform in the same ways when it comes to image quality, maybe just not as long in handhold shooting as you have it here on the lower resolution sensor in the Leica SL2S. What I want to do now is showing sample images from that fun shooting on the Sunday afternoon with friends and family on a Christmas market in Zurich. And I really enjoyed it. I also enjoyed all the rest of the Christmas market, of course, but I also took some nice pictures and in particular, as I said, the multi-shot option here impressed me because the 96 megapixel image as it came out of camera is just absolutely brilliant. And then after showing the sample images, of course, I will conclude with a wrap up and a few remarks. So clearly I was handhold shooting except when I used the multi-shot pixel shift option which I'll come to in a moment and I want to comment on these images which I have selected. So first of all this is an ISO 6400 and 1 over 200 second exposure and uh, clearly then you see a little bit of noise but it preserves the clarity and the structure in these images which is very very nice. And you also see the beautiful background lights here. This was shot widest open at f2.0. Just a very nice image and you don't need a tripod in low light with the Leica SL2S. Absolutely not. Next image, also a portrait. Again, nice background blurriness and lights here. And at an aperture of f2.0. Again, sharp and crisp. Although it's again at an ISO of 6400. Here an image which I took through a shopping window. So this is decoration here. And this was shot at an ISO of 100 because the shopping window was illuminated, of course, and again, widest open. And you see here how brilliant this is, how sharp, in particular if you take into account that the window was between the camera and the subject here where I focused. Here another image where I just shot widest open at f2.0 to see how these background lights are represented and you see they are very nice, very soft. It's a beautiful bokeh you get with this lens on the Leica SL2S. Here another image taken at the Christmas market, cropping in by 100%, sharp, crisp, works for me. And this was shot again, widest open f2.0. As I mentioned before in the video, the Aposumicron SL 75mm f2.0 is made to be shot wide open, if not widest open. And that's what I did on the Christmas market. Again, you see these circular bokeh lights here in the background, quite nice. And uh, I think in general with this lens, you get a very dreamy appearance of the scene in front of you if you shoot the lens wide open. Here a close up shot of some food which someone was holding for me and if I crop in here by 100%, you see this is very, very sharp where the focus was sitting, but the rest is very blurry and nice and soft. And you see here how thin, how shallow the depth of field is if you shoot the lens widest open at f2.0. And again, this is shot at high ISO of 5000. So a very good result. And again, in low light, this camera just performs beautifully together with that lens. I actually like to use also tele lenses for street, cities and landscape. And here is an image 
which was shot at an ISO of 400, widest open again f2.0 and 0.3 seconds. And uh, this is handhold, as I said, I use the tripod only in the multi-shot situation, which I'm going to show in a moment. And it is super sharp. It's a very nice image. Look at all the detail I was able to catch with my SL2S here. And also again, the representation of colors, the way the light is carried across looks very nice to me. Handhold at 0.3 seconds. Here again, handhold shooting at 0.3 seconds, stop down a bit to f4.0, ISO 400. And this is Circus Connelly, and uh, they of course say here Merry Christmas on the Circus tent. And uh, again, super sharp, super crisp, nothing to complain. I could continue for a while, but don't want to show much more images except this one here. And uh, this was shot now handhold at 1.3 seconds, stopped down to f4.0 at an ISO of 400. And of course you have a lot of motion blurriness here when people move through the scene at 1.3 seconds. But what is remarkable is if you look where the focus was sitting here, this is still very sharp and is not blurry at all. So up to 1.3, maybe even two seconds handhold with the Leica SL2S and a tele lens like a 75 millimeter aposumicron here is no problem at all. So you can safely leave your tripod at home if you go and shoot a city with the Leica SL2S and this lens, or of course on wide angle lenses, this will work even better. So the gain of 5.5 stops on in-body image stabilization is really keeping the promise here. And then we have, of course, on the Leica SL and the SL2S, the multi-shot option. And that's a pixel shift technology where the sensor is shifted in eight images by half a pixel in various directions and then combined in-body, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, in-body, into a high resolution image, which is 96 megapixel on the Leica SL2S and 187 megapixel on the Leica SL2. And that's a fantastic technology on Fuji, for instance, on the GFX100S or on Sony, on the A7R Mark V, you need to compose these consecutive frames yourself by software on the computer, whereas on the Leica SL2 and SL2S, the in-camera body software is doing that trick for you. And that is very useful. And you come to that if you go into the status screen here and you go into drive mode and then you swipe all the way to the right hand side and then you find here multi-shot. You can also go there by menu, of course. If we go here into drive mode and then we go here to multi-shot, then we can specify the self timer, which uh, starts. And then after that, the shot of the sequence of eight consecutive frames starts. And you can also activate here motion artifacts correction, which is useful because typically you would use the multi shot for still scenes. But if something is moving in the scene in front of the camera, it can be as best as possible corrected by the camera if you activate here motion artifacts correction. For using the multi-shot option here, you need to place your camera on a tripod, otherwise you get immediately that message here saying vibration detected, please use a stable base for multi-shot. And as long as this message is popping up here, you cannot activate the shutter release button here. It's just blocked. If I place it on a sturdy ground here, then this message goes away as you can see. And now I could release my shot here and then it will kick in self timer and then you see how it is creating the multi-shot image in camera for you. And it also always creates one shot with the native resolution, which is 24 megapixel, of course, on the SL2S and 47 megapixel on the SL2. And then you have two frames, one from the multi-shot, which is a composite of eight half pixel shifted images and one with the native resolution. And here's the result. So on the left-hand side, we have the 96 megapixel multi-shot image. And on the right hand side, we have the native resolution of 24 megapixel. And from a distance, these images look exactly the same. But if I crop into 100%, let's do this here, for instance, then you see that you have four times the resolution on the left hand side compared to native 24 megapixel on the right hand side. And you need to make sure, as I showed before, that the camera is sturdy, otherwise multi shot will not work. But it is a really good feature you can have here in order to achieve higher resolution on a 24 megapixel native sensor. There's plenty of details in these images here and I like a lot the way the Leica SL2S is representing the scene in front of me. It's very natural also from the colors. I did a little bit of post-processing, but it was the blue hour and also the warm light here from the circus tent and you know all these lights in between here on the little boats where you have a little bit of motion fuzziness because they are clearly hovering on the water here. 
but in general a very good result. And uh, as I said various times on my channel, on the Leica SL2 and the Leica SL2S, multi-shot really works. And uh, it's also super convenient because you get these images assembled together right in the camera. You don't have to do anything with software. And in my opinion, it works like a charm. And then there's one more advantage if we compare pixel shift multi-shot on the Leica SL system with, for instance, the Sony system on the A7 series or with the Fuji GFX100S. And that is that the Leica SL and SL2S is not pausing between the consecutive frames. I said before, eight frames are taken and there is no delay. And that helps, of course, in particular, if something is moving in front of you in the scene, which we don't have here, of course, but if something is moving, the less time you waste between the consecutive frames, the less you will have to correct motion artifacts. And that is, of course, a big advantage. And I mentioned this in particular in one video where I took a moonshot with the Leica SL2 and uh, on the Fuji GFX100S, the pause between the consecutive frames was just too long so that the moon already moved and I was not able to get these images assembled together on the computer. Whereas on the Leica SL2, where the composition of eight frames happens in camera, it worked like a charm and there is no pause between these frames. And that's another advantage in my opinion. And on the Leica SL system, we have the best implementation of a pixel shift multi-shot of all camera brands. I hope these sample images have convinced you that the Leica Aposumicron SL 75mm f2.0 is an absolutely brilliant lens. If you are a Leica SL or Leica SL2S shooter, you should have that lens in your camera bag because it will help you for portraits, it will help you for street, it will help you in low light. It will always provide maximum sharpness and contrast, which is typical for Aposumicron lenses. And it can be used in so many versatile ways on the Leica SL2S and the Leica SL2. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and peace out.